offices, including Captain, Dead, Lion and Shoutsum and on the bridge, probably who could it. I'm there. Welcome back to Pagan Valley, friends. With winter behind us and summer slowly approaching, thousands of people will flock to the deepest and scariest part of the earth for a time of relaxation. The world's oceans are filled with biological mysteries hidden far beneath the waves. But tonight, we'll be looking at one of the biggest mysteries to sail the ocean blue. So sit back and put your toes in the sand as we investigate the strange mystery of the SS Orang Madan. Nothing satisfies our spooky cravings like the tragic tale of a shipwreck. Pieces of stories and rumors floating amidst memory and imagination, like bits of wood and timber drifting aimlessly until they sink or are washed ashore. Unsolved to this day, the mystery of the SS Orang Madan has captivated paranormal researchers, internet browsers, and detectives for years. Even government agencies have commented on this tragedy with an air of secrecy always shrouding the truth. The tragic demise of the SS Orang Madan, a Dutch vessel, is said to have taken place in summertime in 1940. The legend states that the ship was passing through the Strait of Malacca when tragedy struck. If you feel like you've seen this area of the world on the news, there is a reason for that, but we'll come back to it. Numerous ships received a chilling distress call in Morse code, which stated, All officers, including Captain, dead, lying in Chartum and on the bridge, probably whole crew dead. This call was followed by more frenzied Morse code in one final sentence. I die. This horrifying message was received by the Silver Star, an American ship closest to the SS Orang Madan. The Silver Star's captain agreed to find the Orang Madan and offered to help those on board. By all accounts, after the Silver Star's rescuers boarded, they were met with a horrific scene. Hearing an SOS, one might expect to find a survivor or two aboard. However, after a short investigation through the ship, they realized that there were no lives to save. Rescue crews from the Silver Star who boarded the vessel found the ship exactly as she was described by the now deceased radio operator. When those on the Silver Star went on board, they were greeted by a nightmarish sight. The entire crew was dead. Their lifeless bodies were strewn about. The entire ship was littered with corpses, all of whom had bulging eyes and terrified expressions on their faces. Their mouths were also said to be open as if they were screaming, and their arms were outstretched as if they were reaching for something. None showed signs of injury that could have caused their deaths. It is reported that they were found with teeth bared, faces upturned towards the sun, and staring as if in fear. Even the ship's resident dog was found dead, frozen mid-growl at horrors unknown. Some rescuers reported a freezing cold chill on board, despite the temperature being well over 100 degrees that day. When the search party returned to the Silver Star, they quickly decided to tow the Orang Madan for salvage. It was only when they tethered the ships together that the crew discovered smoke below deck, specifically in the number four cargo hold of the Madan. Within seconds after they severed the tow rope, the Orang Madan exploded violently. The sheer force lifted it out of the water, but luckily the Silver Star survived the explosion, but the U.S. sailors watched the vessel sink silently under the waves. The story would be released in a report by the U.S. Coast Guard in 1952, during which investigators believed the U.S. government wanted it hidden until the war ended. The Silver Star's accounts led to plenty of dead ends. Importantly, there is no mention of the SS Orang Madan in registries, but many negate this fact by mentioning that the ship was registered in Sumatra. 
the vessel being named after the Sumatran island, Madan. This would explain why the SS Orang Madan was invisible in domestic ship registries. This claim has never been researched or proven, however. I might butcher this, but Professor Theodore Searsdorfer of Essen in Germany has spent much of the last 50 years researching the story of the Orang Madan. Searsdorfer was the first to mention the names of the American ships that originally went in pursuit of the Orang Madan, and refers anyone interested in their own research to a German booklet written in 1954. The author of this publication was a man by the name of Otto Milka. He seemingly knew a lot about the mysterious ship, with knowledge of its route and cargo. Now I'm really going to butcher this name, but this booklet was called Das Totenschiffen der Sudsee, or Disasters at Sea, established the date as June 1947, not 1940, so this was after World War II was over. So rumors suggested that the crewmen above the Silver Star authenticated this. It was also this booklet that mentioned the cargo hold and what might have been inside. According to this booklet, the cargo hold contained potassium cyanide and nitroglycerin. If this is true, then it could explain why there are no official records anywhere. Certainly, having these combustible items on a rough sea is severe negligence. It could also explain the subsequent explosion shortly after the salvage attempt. Some speculated that the ship was carrying a far more sinister and dangerous cargo. One theory suggests that the Japanese may have smuggled experimental biological weapons manufactured by them. Known as Unit 731, the weapon was a secret research and development project. According to historians, the Japanese aimed to create the most dangerous chemical weapon for their establishment of Japanese supremacy. A Japanese bacteriologist named Shiro Ishii conducted terrible experiments during the Second World War. He developed Unit 731 sometime in 1932. And unfortunately, that's where the story ends, because there isn't any more information available either by happenstance or intentionally by someone. So, what happened to the ship? It is possible that these chemicals leaked in the ship's cargo hold, Thus, the crew began suffering from hallucinations, terrified not knowing that their bodies were slowly being poisoned. So, was the SS Orang Madan's demise nothing more than an accidental poisoning? If this is the case, then how did the rescue crew of the Silver Star come on board with the poisonous fumes and then leave totally unharmed? Could it be possible that there were darker forces perhaps involved? This theory lends credit to the hundreds of government cover-up theories circulating online. To the outside world, the Orang Madan never existed because there isn't any concrete evidence of its existence. It's almost as if the ship itself was a ghost. The logs of the Silver Star omit any records of the SS Orang Madan rescue attempt. No crew members of the Silver Star ever shared any relevant information with the media when they got back ashore. So if the Orang Madan never existed, then why did the Coast Guard reference the story in 1954, and later the CIA in 1959? For a ship that never sailed, it has been the subject of many unanswered questions. While it is true the SS Orang Madan was a Dutch freighter that transported goods, it has been claimed that those goods might have been dangerous chemical weapons used for warfare. Due to this, Many theories suggest the Dutch crew was only hired to mask the ship's true intent, smuggling top secret goods from a defeated Japanese empire for the benefit of the American military after the Second World War, as the American government was scooping up scientific developments from the Axie countries.
A much more outlandish theory is one created for most mysteries, that aliens had somehow boarded the ship and killed all the sailors. Why would aliens board a navy ship and kill its crew? Well, the theory also explains that. To believers in this theory, the Japanese had either a living or dead alien in their possession that somehow got to Earth. Like the secret goods idea, the Japanese sold the alien to the United States and the Madan was to ship it to them. Except more aliens came and took whatever the ship was carrying, sinking it in the process. Still outlandish, the paranormal theory is slightly less outlandish. Remember how earlier in the video I showed you this map of the Strait of Malacca and said it could look familiar? This is because this area is the same place Malaysian Flight 340 disappeared back in 2014. Where they searched for that plane is supposedly where the Madan sank. This leads to what some investigators are calling a new Bermuda Triangle in Indonesia. But what caused these disappearances? Well, I don't know. The odds the disappearances are caused by ghosts or spirits are pretty much the same as a natural phenomenon causing the ship to sink. Regardless, it seems to most who know the area that there is something otherworldly occurring in the Strait of Malacca. What it is, I have no idea, but I'm hesitant to call it paranormal. My hope is that this is all a coincidence, but hey, you never know. And that is where the story of the SS Orang Madan ends. Was it all a ghost story told by sailors? Or perhaps it really existed and carried some weapon the US government covered up? Unfortunately, we never know without more information, which I doubt investigators will get after all this time. Hopefully, if the Madan was real, that whatever it carried, whether it was chemicals, a weapon, or even an alien, sunk deep into the ocean where it can't harm anyone. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. What are your thoughts about the SS Orang Madan? And let me know in the comments below what you think. If you want more mysteries just like this one, then make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. This has been Pagan Valley, and I wish you all a good evening.